Hey guys, welcome back for our next chapter in Matilda. Um, we're just going to read one today. Uh, the next two chapters are both fairly long. I think they're each like 17 or 18 pages. Um, and if I read both, then we'd be here for a really long time. And it'd be a super long video for you to watch. So let's just do one today, one tomorrow. Um, I will say that both are pretty um, full of action. So um, we will have plenty to talk about after reading this one. And we'll have plenty to talk about tomorrow after we read the next one. Um, this one is titled Throwing the Hammer, and we get to know a little bit more about some kids in the school, and we also get to know a little bit more about Headmistress Miss Trunchbull. So with that, here we go, Throwing the Hammer. The nice thing about Matilda was that if you had met her casually and talked to her, you would have thought she was a perfectly normal five-and-a-half-year-old child. She displayed almost no outward signs of her brilliance, and she never showed off. This is a very sensible and quiet little girl, you would have said to yourself, and unless for some, uh, for some reason you had, had started a discussion with her about literature or mathematics, you would never have known the extent of her brain power. It was therefore easy for Matilda to make friends with other children. All those in her class liked her. They knew, of course, that she was clever because they had heard her being questioned by Miss Honey on the first day of the term. And they also knew that she was allowed to sit quietly with a book during lessons and not pay attention to the teacher. But children of their age do not search deeply for reasons. They are far too wrapped up in their own small struggles to worry over much about what others are doing and why. About, among Matilda's new found friends was the girl called Lavender. Right from the first day of the term, the two of them started wandering round together during the morning break and in the lunch hour. Lavender was exceptionally small for her age, a skinny little nymph with deep brown eyes and with dark hair that was cut in a fringe across her forehead. Matilda liked her because she was gutsy and adventurous. She liked Matilda for exactly the same reasons. Before the first week of the term was up, awesome tales about the headmistress, Miss Trunchbull, began to filter through the newcomers. Matilda and Lavender, standing in the corner of the playground during morning break, on the third day were approached by a rugged ten-year-old with a boil on her nose called Hortensia. New scum, I suppose, Hortensia said to them looking down from her great height. She was eating from an extra large bag of potato chips and digging the stuff out in handfuls. Welcome to the boar stall, she added, spraying bits of chips out of her mouth like snowflakes. The two tiny ones confronted this giant, confronted by this giant, kept a watchful silence. Have you met the trunch bull yet? Hortensia asked. We've seen her at prayers, Lavender said, but we haven't met her. You've got a great treat coming to you, Hortensia said. She hates very small children. She therefore loathes the bottom class and everyone in it. She thinks five-year-olds are grubs that haven't hatched out. It in went another fistful of crisps, and when she spoke again, out sprayed the crumbs. If you survive your first year, you may just manage to live through the rest of your time here. But many don't survive. They get carried out on stretchers screaming. I've seen it often, Hortensia paused, to observe the effect these remarks were having on the two, uh, two little ones. Not very much. They seemed pretty cool. So the large one decided to regale them with further information. I suppose you know the Trunchbull has a lock-up cupboard in her private quarters called the Chokey. Have you heard about the Chokey? Matilda and Lavender shook their heads and continued to gaze up at the giant. Being very small, they were inclined to mistrust any creature that was larger than they were, especially senior girls. The Chokey, Hortensia went on, is a very tall but very narrow cupboard. The floor is only ten inches square, so you can't sit down or squat in it. You have to stand, and three walls are made out of cement with bits of broken glass sticking out all over. You can't lean against them. You have to stand more or less at attention all the time when you're locked up in there. It's terrible. Can't you lean against the door, Matilda asked. Don't be daft, Hortensia said. The door's got thousands of sharp, spiky nails sticking out of it. They've been hammered through the from the outside, probably by the trunch bowl herself. Have you ever been in there, Lavender asked. My first term, I was in there six times, Hortensia said twice for a whole day and other times for two hours each but two hours is quite bad enough it's pitch dark and you have to stand straight and if you wobble at all you get spiked either by the glass on the walls or the nails in the door why were you in there matilda asked what had you done 
first time, Hortensia said, I poured half a tin of golden syrup on the seat of the chair of the trench bowl. The, she was, the trench bowl was going to sit on at prayers. It was wonderful. When she lowered herself into the chair, there was this great loud squelching noise, similar to that made by a hippopotamus when lowering its foot into mud on the banks of a river. But you're too small and stupid to have read the just so stories, aren't you? I've read them, Matilda said. You're a liar. Hortensia said. You can't even read yet, but no matter. So when the trench bull sat down on the golden syrup, the squelch was beautiful. And when she jumped up again, the chair sort of stuck to the seat of those awful green britches she wears and came up with her for a few seconds until the thick syrup slowly came unstuck. Then she clasped her hands onto the back of her britches and both hands got covered in the muck. You should have heard her bellow. But how did she know that it was you, Lavender asked. Little squirt called Ollie Boggs' whistle sneaked on me, Hortensia said. I knocked his front teeth out. And the trunch will put you in the chokey for a whole day, Matilda asked, gulping. All day long, Hortensia said. I was off my rocker when she let me out. I was babbling like an idiot. What were the other kinds of things that you did to get put in the chokey, Lavender asked. I can't remember them right now, Hortensia said. She spoke with an air of an old warrior who had been in so many battles that the bravery has become commonplace. It's all so long ago, she added, stuffing more chips into her mouth. Ah, uh, yes, I can remember one. Here's what happened. I chose a time when I knew the trench bowl was out of the way, teaching the six formers. Not uh, six formers, sorry. And I put up my hand put up my hand and asked to go to the bogs, but instead of going there, I sneaked into the trench bull's room. After a speedy search, I found the drawer where she kept her gym knickers. Go on, Matilda said, spellbound. What happened next? I had sent away by post, you see, for this very powerful itching powder, Hortensia said. It cost five pence a packet, and it was called the skin scorcher. The label said that it was made from the powdered teeth of a deadly snake, and it was guaranteed to raise welts the size of walnuts on your skin. So I sprinkled the stuff inside every pair of knickers in the drawer and then folded them all up again carefully. Hortensia paused to cram more crisps into her mouth. Did it work? Lavender asked. Well, Hortensia said. A few days later, during prayers, the trench bull suddenly started scratching herself like mad. Aha, I said. Here we go. She changed for the gym already. It was pretty wonderful to be sitting there watching it all and knowing that I was the only person in the whole school who realized exactly what was going on inside the trunch bull's pants. And I felt safe, too. I knew that I couldn't be caught. Then the scratching got worse. She couldn't stop. She must have thought that she had a wasp's nest down there. And then right in the middle of the Lord's Prayer, she leapt up and grabbed her bottom and rushed out of the room. Both Matilda and Lavender were enthralled. It was quite clear to them that they were... In this moment, standing in the presence of a master, here was somebody who had brought the art of skullduggery to the highest point of perfection, somebody, moreover, who was willing to risk life and limb in pursuit of her calling. They gazed in wonder at this goddess, and suddenly, even the boil on her nose was no longer a blemish, but a badge of courage. But how did she catch you that time, Lavender asked, breathless with wonder. She didn't, Hortensia said but I got a day in the chokey just the same. Why? They both asked. The trunch bowl, Hortensia said, has a nasty habit of guessing. When she doesn't know who the culprit is, she makes a guess at it, and the trouble is she's often right. I was the prime suspect this time because of the golden syrup job, and although I knew that she didn't have any proof, nothing I said made any difference. I kept shouting, how could I have done it, Miss Trunchbull? I didn't even know you kept any spare knickers at school. I didn't know what itching powder is. I've never heard of it. But the lying didn't help me, in spite of the great performance I put on. The trunch bull simply grabbed me by one ear and rushed me to the chokey at the double and threw me inside the locked door. That was my second all-day stretch. It was absolute horror. I was spiked and cut all over when I came out. It's like a war, Matilda said. You're darn right it's like a war. Hortensia cried. 
and the casualties are terrific. We are the Crusaders, the gallant army fighting for our lives with hardly any weapons at all, and the trunch bowl is like the prince of darkness, the foul serpent, the fiery dragon, with all the weapons at her command. It's a tough life. We all try to support each other. You can rely on us, Lavender said, making her height of three feet two inches stretch as tall as possible. No, I can't, Hortensia said. You're only shrimps. But you never know. We may find a use for you one day for some undercover job. Tell us a little bit more about what she does, Matilda said. Please do. I mustn't frighten you before you've been here a week, Hortensia said. You won't, Lavender said. We may be small, but we're quite tough. Listen to this, then, Hortensia said. Only yesterday, the trench bowl caught a boy called Julius Rotwinkle eating licorice, licorice all sorts, during the scripture lesson, and she simply picked him up by one arm and flung him clear out the open classroom window. Our classroom is one floor up, and we saw Julius Rotwinkle go sailing out over the garden like a frisbee and landing with a thump in the middle of the lettuces. Then the trench bull turned to us and said, From now on, anybody caught eating in class goes straight out the window. Did this Julius Rotwinkle break any bones? Lavender asked. Only a few, Hortensia said. You've got to remember that the trench bull once threw the hammer for Britain in the Olympics, and she's very proud of her right arm. What's throwing the hammer? Lavender asked. The hammer, Hortensia said, is actually a rudy great cannonball at the end of a long bit of wire, and the thrower whisks it around and around from his or her, uh, round and around his or her head faster and faster, and then lets it go. You have to be terrifically strong. The trunch bowl will throw anything round just to keep her arm in, especially children. Good heavens, Lavender said. I once heard her say, Hortensia went on, that a large boy is about the same weight as an Olympic hammer, and therefore he's very useful for practicing with. At that point, something strange happened. The playground, which up to then had been filled with shrieks and shouting of children at play, all at once became as silent as a grave. Watch out, Hortensia whispered. Matilda and Lavender glanced round and saw the gigantic figure of Miss Trunchbull advancing through the crowd of boys and girls with menacing strides. The children drew back hastily to let her through, and her progress across the asphalt was like that of Moses going through the Red Sea when the waters parted. A formidable figure she was, too, in her belted smock and green breeches. Below the knees, her calf muscles stood out like grapefruits inside her stockings. Amanda Thrip, she was shouting. You, Amanda Thrip, come here. Hold your hats, Hortensia whispered. What's going to happen? Lavender whispered back. That idiot Amanda, Hortensia said, has let her long hair grow even longer during the holidays, and her mother's paint, uh, put it into pigtails. Silly thing to do. Why silly? Matilda asked. If there's one thing the trench bull can't stand, it's pigtails, Hortensia said. Matilda and Lavender saw a girl in green breeches advance, saw the giant in green breeches advancing upon a girl of about ten who had a pair of uh, golden pigtails hanging over her shoulders. Each pigtail had a blue satin bow at the end of it, and it all looked very pretty. The girl wearing the pigtail, pigtails, Amanda Thripp, stood quite still, watching the advancing giant, and the expression on her face was one that you might find on the face of a person who is trapped in a small field with an enraged bull, which is charging flat out toward her. The girl was glued to the spot, terror-struck, pop-eyed, quivering, knowing for certain that the day of judgment had come for her at last. Miss Trunchbull had now reached the victim and stood towering over her. I want those filthy pigtails off before you come back to school tomorrow, she barked. Chop them off and throw them in the dustbin. You understand. Amanda, paralyzed with fright, managed to stutter. My mummy likes them. She, she does them for me every morning. Your mummy's a twit, the twitch bull bellowed. Uh, the trunch bull, sorry, bellowed. She pointed a finger at the, the size of a salami at the child's head and shouted, You look like a rat with a tail coming out of its head. My mummy thinks they look lovely, Miss Tr Trunchbull, Amanda stuttered, shaking like a leaf. I don't give a tinker's toot what your mummy thinks, the trunch bull yelled, 
And with that, she lunged forward and grabbed hold of Amanda's pigtails in her right fist and lifted the girl clear up off the ground. Then she started swinging her around and around her head faster and faster, and Amanda was screaming. Blue murder in the trench bowl was yelling, I'll give you pigtails, you little rat. Shades of the Olympics, Hortensia murmured. She's getting up to speed now, just like she does with the hammer. Ten to one, she's going to throw her. And now the trench bull was leaning back against the weight of the whirling girl, pivoting expertly on her toes, spinning round and round. And soon Amanda Thripp was traveling so fast she became a blur. And suddenly, with a mighty grunt, the trench bull let go of the pigtails and Amanda went sailing like a rocket right over the wire fence of the playground and high up into the sky. Well thrown, sir, someone shouted from across the playground. And Matilda, who was mesmerized by the whole crazy affair, saw Amanda Thripp descending in a long, graceful parabola on the, play- on the to the playing field beyond. She landed on the grass and bounced three times and finally came to a rest. Then, amazingly, she sat up. She looked a trifle da- dazed, but who could blame her? But after a minute or so, she got to her feet again and started tottering back toward the playground. The trunch bull stood in the playground, dusting off her hands. Not bad, she said, considering I'm not in strict training. Not bad at all. Then she strode away. She's mad, Hortensia said. But don't parents complain, Matilda asked. Would yours? Hortensia asked. I know mine wouldn't. She treats the mothers and fathers just the same as the children, and they're all scared to death of her. I'll be seeing you sometime. You too. And with that, she sauntered away. On the bottom, there's a picture of Amanda Amanda Thripp sitting in the um, grass after she'd just been thrown over the fence. Um, So there we get to know one of the older girls in the school. Um, That girl is in her last year um, at the school. And we got to know a little bit more about um, Lavender, who is becoming friends with Matilda. And we certainly got to know more about Miss Trunchbull and some of the things that she does to the children in her school. So uh, once again, let's have a great conversation about this in the comment section at the bottom of this post. All right, guys, talk to you today. See ya.